Hello everyone. In this video, let's discuss the basics of derivatives. The term derivatives might sound very fancy, new and complex. The truth is, it is just a risk management tool that's been in existence since many many years. In fact, the earliest evidence revealed that farmers used derivative contracts way back in 17th century to protect themselves against the decline in crop prices. So in this session we will be discussing about the very basics of derivative contracts that includes the meaning of derivatives and various derivative products. So let's get started. The basic purpose of derivatives is to mitigate or transfer the risk arising from future uncertainty of prices. Management of risk through derivatives is commonly referred to as hedging. So the various commonly used derivative products include forwards, futures and options. Let's begin with forward contract. Let me give you an example. We all know that tomato prices are highly volatile in the market. Sometimes it sells at rupees 15 or 20 per kg and sometimes even at rupees 120 per kg. But if you had noticed, the price of tomato ketchups in the market is not as volatile as that of the tomatoes. So how do you think the company managed to retain a stable selling price for the ketchups despite the price of tomatoes being highly volatile? Probably the company would have entered into a forward agreement with the trader. A forward is an agreement between two parties to engage in a transaction at a later date with the price set in advance. So the later date is referred to as the expiry date and the pre-decided price is referred to as the forward price. Let us say currently tomatoes are selling at rupees 30 per kg in the market. Assume that the company will require 10,000 kgs of tomatoes 3 months from now. It is concerned about a potential increase in the price of tomatoes. Thus, it enters into a forward contract with the trader to buy 10,000 kgs of tomatoes at rupees 40 per kg in 3 months. So here, the forward price is rupees 40 per kg. In case of scenario 1, what if the spot price on expiry is more than the forward price? So if the spot price of tomatoes on the date of expiry is rupees 70 per kg, let's calculate the profit or loss incurred by both the parties involved in the forward contract. So in this case, the spot price of tomatoes in the market on the date of expiry is much higher than the agreed price. Though the tomatoes are selling at rupees 70 in the market, the trader is supposed to sell 10,000 kgs of tomatoes at rupees 40 to the ketchup company as per the forward agreement. Therefore, in this transaction, the buyer, that is a ketchup company, makes a profit of rupees 3 lakhs and the trader loses the same amount. Now, we very well know that in this forward agreement, there is 3 months time for expiry. What if by the end of the first month, the trader senses that the market might not work in his favour and wants to pull out of the contract midway? He can do so provided he could find someone else in his place to continue the transaction. But finding that someone is going to be a Herculean task. Thus, it is very evident that forward contract is subject to liquidity risk. It is not easy to get out of the contract midway. Now let's consider the second scenario. What if the spot price on expiry is rupees 20 per kg? In this case, the spot price of tomatoes is lesser than the agreed price and therefore the seller in the transaction gets benefited. Though the tomatoes are selling at rupees 20 in the market, the trader will be able to sell 10,000 kgs of tomatoes at rupees 40 per kg to the ketchup company as per the forward agreement. Thus, the trader earns a profit of rupees 2 lakhs and the same is a loss for the buyer that is a ketchup company. Now, what if the company refuses to fulfill its obligation? The trader is bound to suffer, isn't it? Remember, a forward contract is just a private agreement and therefore it is subject to counterparty risk or default risk. There is no mediator to ensure that both the parties fulfill their obligations arising out of the contract. Now let's take the third scenario, where the spot price on maturity is 40 per kg, which is same as the forward price. In this case, there is no profit, no loss for both the parties involved in the contract. So always remember, in a forward contract, the buyer of the underlying asset, in case it's tomatoes, is always bullish about the market. He or she expects the price to go up. 
and similarly the seller of the underlying asset is always bearish about the market movement he or she expects the price to fall in a nutshell it is clear that the forward contracts are subject to default and liquidity risk so in order to overcome this risk the parties can enter into a future contract instead of a forward agreement unlike forward contracts a future contract is not a private transaction but gets traded on a recognized commodity exchange in addition all the terms of the contract that is the expiry date transaction timing minimum transaction quantity all of these are set by the exchange and most importantly both the parties of the future contracts are protected against counterparty risk by an entity called as clearing corporation so the clearing corporation collects a certain percentage on the total transaction value as margin money from both the parties involved in the transaction and this margin money is adjusted daily to the market conditions if the market situation favors the buyer the difference amount is debited from the seller's margin money and the same is credited to the buyer's margin money similarly if the market situation favors a seller the difference amount is debited from the buyer's margin money and the same is credited to the seller's margin money we shall discuss this concept in depth by solving numericals in the upcoming videos and also the future contract entered through the exchange provides liquidity any time the parties involved in the transaction can either book their profits or losses and square off their positions midway his or her position would be automatically replaced by another participant in the market so please keep in mind that the transaction is still continued by another person and it has not come to an end this would continue till the date of expiry and there is complete anonymity the parties never know who exactly is on the other side of the transaction now let's move on to options an option is a derivative contract between a buyer and a seller where one party gives the other party the right but not the obligation to fulfill the contract in return for granting the option premium is collected from the option buyer so in the previous example of future contracts both the parties in the transaction that is the buyer as well as the seller are obliged to fulfill the contract but if the parties in the transaction would want to fulfill the contract only if the situation favors them and not fulfill if the if the situation is not favoring them then they should probably enter into an option contract instead of a future contract so there are two types of options call and put option call option gives a right to the buyer of the underlying asset and put option gives a right to the seller of the underlying asset the underlying asset in our example is tomato so let's recollect the previous example so remember the call option gives a right to the buyer therefore the ketchup company who is the buyer has to buy a call option from the trader that would give the company the right but not the obligation to fulfill the contract in return for granting the option premium is collected from the option buyer let us say a premium of rupees 3 per kg is paid by the buyer to the seller of the call option now here let us consider different scenarios in scenario 1 where the spot price is less than the strike price or excise price or the agreed price so if the spot price on expiry is rupees 20 per kg and the agreed price is rupees 40 per kg let's calculate the profit or loss incurred by both the parties involved in the option contract so in this case the spot price of tomatoes in the market on the date of expiry is much lower than the agreed price if the company fulfills the contract it will incur a loss of rupees 20 per kg into 10000 kgs which is 2 lakh because it has bought a call option and as the situation is not favoring the buyer as per the contract the company is not obliged to fulfill the contract so the maximum loss is the premium paid which is rupees 3 per kg into 10000 kgs which is finally 30000 rupees so the call option buyer's loss is limited to the premium paid and the profit for the seller of the call option is limited to the premium received now let's move on to second scenario where the spot price is more than the strike or excise price or the agreed price what if the spot price on expiry is rupees 70 per kg of tomatoes and the agreed price is rupees 40 per kg this situation favors the buyer of the underlying asset therefore the call option buyer that is a ketchup company would demand the call seller that is a trader to fulfill the contract thus the call buyer would enjoy a profit of rupees 27 per kg into 10000 kgs would finally yield him a profit of 2 lakh 70000 rupees the call seller would suffer a loss of the same amount now you might wonder how about if the trader who is a seller of the underlying asset would like to enjoy the option then he has to buy a put option 
put option gives the seller of the underlying asset the right but not the obligation to sell so here are a few points to remember a call buyer always expects a price to rise he is bullish a call seller expects a price not to rise a put buyer expects a price to fall he is bearish whereas a put seller expects a price not to fall so please note that there is a huge difference between thinking that the price will fall and the price will not go up both are not the same the profit of the call seller is limited to the premium received even if the price falls similarly the profit of the put seller is limited to the premium received even if the price rises so that's all for this video i hope you now have a solid grasp of the fundamentals of derivatives thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next one thank you